Hi, welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm your host, Monica Weitzel. Today we'll be talking with the Friends of the Columbia Gorge. The Gorge is the largest national scenic area in the United States, and Friends of the Columbia Gorge has been working for 40 years to protect and preserve this treasured asset in our own backyard. And as summer ramps up and we balance our need for distancing with our love of the outdoors, the question on many people's mind is, where can I hike in the Gorge and when? Today we'll take a look at the timeline for the trail and park reopenings and talk about the ongoing work of the Friends of the Columbia Gorge. Joining us today is the Executive Director of Friends of the Columbia Gorge, Kevin Gorman. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you for having me, Monica. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. First of all, I want to say congratulations on 40 years as the only conservation organization that's dedicated entirely to protecting the Columbia Gorge. That's very exciting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big milestone for us. We started out as this little engine that could and over the years have really uh, built our membership and our support. And, and today the Gorge is something that really people of all backgrounds, uh, all areas really care about and want to see yeah. protected. They do. And, and I know people come from all over the world to, to mm -hmm. see the Columbia Gorge. It's really a national treasure. But Oregonians especially love the Columbia Gorge. And through this COVID-19 crisis, they really miss being able to go hiking, to go, you know, um, exploring the waterfalls and, and just you know, all the things, all the fun things there are things there are to do on the gorge. So can you tell us, first of all, what is the status right now? Are people able to re, uh, to enter the, the gorge and use those resources or is, is everything still closed? No, uh, as of last week, it slowly started reopening. So I think, um, and when I say reopening, uh, some places are reopening. The, right. the waterfall area, which is really the most popular area, is not reopening yet because I think it's almost impossible to imagine how you social distance at a place like Multnomah Falls. Um, but yes. um, many of the other places uh, further east, east of Cascade Locks and on the Washington side have opened. The best way to sort of cut through the confusion is to go to a website called readysetgorge.com and they have a list of everything that is open uh, and everything that's closed. And so, so the thing to just keep in mind is I think the local communities, places like Hood River and uh, Cascade Locks uh, are very concerned that they don't have the healthcare infrastructure if any outburst of the virus happens. So, so they're encouraging people to take their time in coming back. Uh, and if they do go out there to just be careful to uh, social distance, if they come to a trailhead and it's packed with cars, um, find another spot to go to. If you're hiking on a trail, um, bring a mask with you. You don't necessarily need to wear a mask when you're outdoors hiking, but if somebody is approaching you and there's no way to really create separation, uh, just slip the mask on and slip it off. So uh, just, just using those types of things, I think, would help people. Uh, people will be happy to hear that. They can get yeah. back out there. I, I know I've talked to people that are really anxious to get back out and start hiking, and, and, you know, um, and even if the waterfalls are not open yet you know there's there's a lot of other things to do you know the the plants and the animals i think have loved the reprieve but um but i think also it, it it's 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 an important place for people to connect to so you've been uh, an organization in in doing this work for 40 years now what um what is it that you do to protect the gorge what and what are you protecting it from well, when the organization was formed, there was no national scenic area. There was no federal protection, and the two states handled things very differently. And there were a lot of proposed subdivisions um, that were starting to pop up coming from Portland and Vancouver. So mm. people knew that the gorge was going to change fast if something didn't happen. So our organization was formed. We worked to create the national scenic area. And since that time, uh, our focus is really on protecting, preserving, and enhancing the gorge. So when it comes to protection, it's trying to work to limit the amount of oil trains that come through the gorge, because that, that had big impacts in Mosier, as we saw a few years ago, but it also uh, has just been um, 
problematic in other ways. Our uh, preserving really comes with our land trust work. We have a land trust that buys land. So we own over 1,600 acres of land. Two of our properties have trails on them that the public can use. Most people just assume it might be federal or state land. Well, it's really our land trust that uh, holds that property, maintains the trail, keeps it kept up. And, um, and then with enhance, uh, we do a lot of work, whether it's enhancing a natural area, uh, removing invasives, planting natives, or enhancing a recreation area. Uh, many of your listeners um, may know of the Cape Horn Trail. Uh, I, I worked on that project for over 20 years, getting piece by piece land purchased. We bought the last piece, removed a 5,000 square foot house and built an overlook. And today, that's one of the most popular trails in the gorge. And it only happened because of the work that our organization and other groups did uh, on the side of enhancement. How do you make something better, something that the public will really cherish? You have a lot of work that you do, but you obviously need a lot of volunteers to do that, I, I'm assuming. Do you, uh, has this COVID-19 affected the amount of volunteers you have? I mean, they, they haven't been able to do much lately, have they? Yeah, they haven't been able to do anything. In the spring, we usually have a hiking program mm -hmm. where we will have over 60 hikes that are led by volunteers, mm -hmm. all of that. None of that happened. Mm -hmm. We typically have stewardship events uh, on weekdays and weekends, and we are usually uh, going gangbusters right now. Right. None of that has happened. So. So everybody is on hold. We're hoping that we will be able to do our fall hikes. We're hoping that we can start doing um, some stewardship events uh, in the coming weeks um, and months. But, you know, the, they're all going to look a little different. You know, we used yeah. to have stewardship where you'd have a group of 20 or 30 people all in this <laughs> relatively tight space. And now... We may have two people that go out there and a couple people there and, yeah. you know, and we'll be monitoring it, but it's just going to be uh, different because we, we, we have to figure out not just our employees, but how do we keep our members, our volunteers safe? So we're hoping the volunteering will kick back up. Um, we do have people who are uh, advocates who write comment letters and do that kind of thing. And that's still going on. Um, Basically, for the best way for people to connect on that end is just to go to our website, which is gorgefriends.org, and uh, sign up to receive alerts. And you'll, mm. you'll receive alerts on our volunteer projects. You'll receive alerts on our uh, uh, actions that we take uh, to protect the gorge. And that's also the place where people can sign up and donate uh, to become a member. Because we have about 7,000 um, members in Oregon, Washington, and beyond. And those people are really the lifeblood of the organization. Mm -hmm. You know, our operations are funded about 70% by individuals. Wow. You know, not, not foundations, not government, mm -hmm. but just average individuals. So, it's, it's so you can always need, you always need more. And, and I'm sure, especially now. You could use yeah, that, that yeah. Support. We, yeah. Like many others, right when this hit, we took a huge hit and we're working our way out of it. It's just inspiring to see our members stepping up, but it's um, it's still a tough time. It's a tough time for every nonprofit. That is. So if people are interested, go to the website, check it out, and they can they can yeah. figure out a way that that they can help. Yeah, and I'll I'll just say you know with our 40th anniversary, you go to the website, and especially if you've been there before, you'll see it's a new look. And we actually mm -hmm. have a new logo. And it's interesting because we've had previous logos um, and they've always had that view looking from Women's Forum to the Vista House and mm -hmm. beyond. And many of our Gorge members who live in Hood River, the Dallas, ask, well, why is it always this Portland-centric view of the Gorge? Mm -hmm. And so we, we decided, well, let's go bird's eye. Let's look down on the river itself. And you know, and make sure that it feels like it's welcoming to everybody, no matter where they live. I also read your blog about um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and yeah. was really impressed with that. And, and that, that's, a, that's a main focus of, of the Friends of the Columbia Gorge. So good for you. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's yeah. a long journey. 
Yes, yes, it is. It is. Thank you, Kevin, so much for updating us on what we can now do in the Gorge and what we can look forward to and how we can help. The Gorge is a really special place to a lot of people. And I think uh, people understand that uh, it needs to be protected um, beyond our own lifetimes. And so the more that we can build support that people are out there uh, calling for its protection, um, the, the better chance we have of really making a difference in the years to come. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Keep up the good work and best luck to you. Okay. Thank you, thanks. Monica. Yes, you're welcome. And thanks to our viewers, um, all of us at Metro East, we hope you'll stay safe and stay healthy. Mm -hmm.